Welcome to another episode of An Intimate Conversation with Women of Color. Today's episode is a throwback to Hispanic Heritage Month of 2020. Our guest is Anna L. Garcia. She is my friend and sister, and she is also the president of AT&T's Hispanic, Latino, Latinx Employee Resource Group. So get ready to learn about more about Anna and how she honors those who came before her. Thank you so much for being a loyal listener on your favorite podcast platform, watching on YouTube. I so appreciate you. And let me know what's on your mind. Pop over to DeneenLGarrett.com, leave a voice message, uh, leave a review, send me an email. I want to hear from you. Thank you. Anna L. Garcia, hello, and welcome to an intimate conversation with women of color. How are you? Hi, thank you so much for inviting me and having me today. You are so welcome. And I stress the L. I don't know if you're as um, particular about the L and um, your middle initial as I am. My middle initial is is, uh, Latisse, so L as well. And I like to see my name when you're writing it, I like to see a Deneen L. Garrett as opposed to just Deneen Garrett. Are you the same way with your L? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I grew up not even knowing my first name was Anna. It was, I was Laudis, Laudis, which is the nickname for my middle name, Laura. So it was always Laudis. And when I went to school and they asked for Anna Corona, I was like, hmm, that's my name, I think. <laughs> I I like my L (laughs) right and so mine is like a childhood story as well and it was when I went to get my social security card you had to sign it and the person said well however you sign it that's like official so ever since then when I like you know when it's in writing I like to see the L and just recently I actually um you know announce myself as Danino Garrett as opposed to just Danine Garrett just to kind of help people you know trigger them to like okay when you write my name (laughs) make sure you put that that L L. in there (laughs) (laughs) so again welcome and I like to share how I know my guests so you and I have known each other for a while we work for the same company and I'm sure we probably first met either when you raised your hand to um, support one one of two of the uh, Hispanic Latino events that I um, that I host, it was either the ASE or it was uh, Tecnologica. So I'm not sure which one, but I think that that's when we first you know got connected. Right, and I think it happened in the same year. So whichever yeah. one came first that right? year. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. And we've been connected ever since. And I absolutely love that. I love the relationship. And and I love to see all the things that you're doing in H-Town. And for those that don't know, it's Houston, Texas. Um, You are doing some big things. And congratulations, because uh, you've been the national president for what, a couple of months now? Yes, three months. Okay. All right. All right. And I'm just looking forward to all the wonderful things that you'll do this year. So, Anna, why is it important for women of color, Latinas, to have a platform to use their voices? Well, I'm going to speak in reference to all women of color, although Latinas do practically fall on the lower spectrum when it comes to um, having the right platform. Um, But I think it's important that we continue to work together. So when I think of women of color, I think of us having and sharing some of the greatest challenges, whether it is through our professional corporate environment, whether it's in our personal lives or in just about any aspect that surrounds us. So we are faced with the greatest challenges. We are also looking at having the least support and advocacy um, that's external to within our own circle of trust, so to speak, Um, even though diversity is pushed on the agenda. I think that the resources to put Latinos in front of these issues is not there, whether it's funding, whether it's the wrong people leading the charge or what have you, there still seems to be a lot of of us that get ignored 
or, you know, washed under the bridge or just, you know, taken for granted. And I think a lot of times it's not that they don't know we're there. I just think that they forget we're there. Um, and we are also very, very much vulnerable and accepting of our circumstances. So instead of being the person to stand up and say, well, no, I, I think I, I didn't, I maybe, you know, shouldn't have gotten that. And just in those terms, like I said it, we think uh, to, you know, overthink a lot of our circumstances and then accept them like, oh, well, you know, I didn't deserve it. She was better than me. He was a better candidate. And it's not always the case. Um, so I do think that it is important for us to have a platform. And I want to remind women that this platform does not have to be where you have a title of leadership. It doesn't have to mean that you are a um, big ticket item in the, in the arena of, you know, anything, you know, it doesn't have to be where you are a president. It doesn't mean you have to be any title that you would look up to. I think our platforms are all there. We each have a platform. And I want to remind everyone that your workplace is your platform. So if you see a fellow colleague not being uh, taken into consideration when they try to voice themselves or they're quickly shut down, maybe acknowledge that and say, hey, I heard Anna say this, Deneen, what do you think? You know, bring it up, be the supporting factor there, because that's also going to reassure them that it's okay to speak up. So um, that's very important to me. Um, also, contribution, standing up for others and outside of those circumstances. Maybe Denise's not there to defend herself, but Anna is. But no, Denise did that, you know, because there were, other people are quick to take credit for other people's work at times. And it happens more than we know and more than we care to admit it. But that doesn't mean we have to stay quiet and accept it. Um, I also think that we all have social media. Social media is a big thing right now, right? And it's a very powerful thing. So the way we voice ourselves on that, you know, we can have a platform where we elevate other women, we elevate other Latinas. Um, it provides opportunities to connect with people we might not otherwise know. So I do think that women of color must all use their voice and we all do have a platform. It's just recognizing that platform. And I love that um, when you were speaking about, you know, speaking up for others, it reminded me of signal boosting. So in one of the events that I attended, there was an Amber Hikes and she got up, she spoke, she was so powerful. And she talked about signal boosting, which is pretty much what you said. You know, when a woman speaks up and says something, have her back, right. boost what she said. You know, when someone else, you know, says something and takes credit for it. No, you know, exactly what you said. No, someone else said that, you know, boost them, you know, be the voice for them when they're not around. And absolutely, your social media is a platform. Because when I say use your voice, I mean, use your expression, however you are able to express yourself. So whether that's actual, you know, vocal, you know, or if it's social media, if it's through dance, whatever your form of expression, that is a way of using your voice. So absolutely. And then the point you made about we all, you know, have a platform, we all can speak up, you don't have to have that title. You're right, because my po the podcast actually came from a panel that I created. I created panel for LGBTQ plus women of color and allies. And I did that because in this particular space that I created it for, there weren't very many, first, there weren't very many people of color, <laughs> let alone women, right, um, in that particular community at that particular event. So I said, you know what, I'm about to create this space for them. So the, the, this came from that. So everything you said is absolutely spot on and you definitely use your platform. You use everything at your fingertips to boost other women and to use your voice for them. So thank you so very much. Absolutely. So yesterday started Hispanic Heritage Month and it runs through October 15. And during this time, we celebrate the rich culture and contributions of Hispanics again, during Hispanic Heritage Month. You're Mexican, you're Latina, American, um, Mexican, Latina. How do you celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month? So being born in the United States, 
from parents that have been in the United States and parents that have been in, in the United, grandparents that have been in the United States. Um, I never wanted to lose my heritage. Um, it's a funny story how um, I learned to read and write Spanish, stealing my dad's novelas. You know, at home, we, was most, <laughs> we would mo mo mostly speak English. Like my mom and I spoke English. My dad always worked away. Um, and even though a lot of people think my dad is actually Anglo because of the way he looks, he's about as Mexican as they come. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't speak English very well. And uh, with him, we would speak Spanish. So I did appreciate that. And of course, my grandparents, we spoke Spanish too. But I didn't want to lose my heritage. And actually, if you meet some of my family, a lot of them don't even speak the language. So I like to embrace it. And I like to teach my children. So the way I celebrate is by raising awareness and sharing some of those forgotten historical stories. Um, I know that the subject of inequality is a big thing right now. It's in the media um, and it is focusing on a lot of the, um, you know, the wrongs on society, a lot of the civil rights movements, a lot of those things. Well, Hispanics have a very rich history in that as well, a very unfortunate rich history in that as well. So I think it is my duty to make sure that others know we have a lot more in common. We are a lot more relatable. And, um, you know, I am one of those that 100 percent believes in embracing other cultures and understanding. So I think that the way we can really get past a lot of this is by knowing about the other cultures. Um, you know, Latinos were deported in the United States after World War I because they were accused of being the downfall of the United States economic, you know, factor. And these were U.S. born. These were U.S. citizens that were being deported. And a lot of people don't know that. They don't know about those injustices. They don't know about the time when, um, Latino women would go in to give birth to their children in California and come back being sterilized. You know, they don't know a lot of these historical things that have happened. And um, I feel that it's important. So on, like on my social media, I've been sharing those stories and I will continue to do so through the rest of the month. Um, so don't ever forget those that come before us. Uh, don't forget the hidden injustices. Learn from them so that you can continue to use your voice. Um, because these people took action, they made it known, they made it seen so that you and I wouldn't have to suffer that and so that you and I wouldn't have to deal with it, you know, through our journey. And I will say I grew up very blessed. I never had needs. I was very fortunate to, you know, have a great life, but I knew people who didn't. So I thought it was my duty to also learn about those experiences and understand because the more we get to know and understand somebody, the more we get to appreciate the history that we shared or not shared. Yeah, absolutely. And you talk about the injustices and you talk about, you know, the, the experiences that I didn't know either of that, right? I didn't know about being deported. I didn't know about the women being sterilized. And sadly, you know, horrifically, it's happening now. Yes. You know, or trying to, trying, trying to send people back to somewhere that they don't even know, right? right? They, they never came, they never lived there. So, you, you know, so it's not even sending them back, but it's, it's getting rid of them, right? And also with the sterilizing women, um, I read yesterday how in the detention camps, yeah, um, happening that now. they, yeah, they, they were uh, performing hysterectomies yes. and it's, it's mind blowing. It's, it's mind boggling that we're dealing with this in 2020 in 2020, but I do appreciate, you know, your efforts to raise the awareness, to let people know, to speak out and to use your voice so that we are aware and that we, you know, we know, you know, the quote, when you know better, you do better. And it gives us an opportunity to do better, um, raising that awareness. Absolutely. Sorry. And I think a lot of our experiences are going to also be b based in the region we grew up. So in mm -hmm. Texas, we are a very high Latino population, mostly because we were Texas before right. we were Texas. And so we see a lot of the stories here. There was an, actually an anti-Mexican um, organization and anti-Mexican slaughtering and everything that happened in Texas. So I think those experiences are different. So we also have to learn to broaden our horizons when we think of these things, right? 
Yes, absolutely. And so we're already talking about how you're using your voice for women of color um, and, you know, how you're amplifying your contributions of Latinas. Like you mentioned Facebook. So, you know, you're part of the the podcast Facebook group and yesterday was Takeover Tuesday. So you did share some quotes from Latina women and you have more to share. You're doing it on your own Facebook. You, you created a YouTube for the employee resource group. You're already using your voice. How else are you using it that we haven't already talked about? So I love to mentor and I actually have um, several mentees that are professional women who are working on their career. Um, and some of them are actually even older than me. So I find that, you know, again, we can always empower other women. Don't judge a book by its cover. They might know more than you or vice versa, right? It's good to talk and integrate. I love mentoring. Of course, my focus is the youth and the next generation um, and understanding, you know, some of the obstacles being faced today because school was very different from when I was going to school today. Um, so it's important to acknowledge that, mentor others, educate others, and recognize others. So if you know somebody made a contribution, but they're kind of culturally, Latinos don't always speak up. And we will do so much, but nobody knows we're doing this because we've been taught that boasting or acting, you know, like, oh, I'm better than you, even though it's not the intention, it's not appropriate. Um, I was very blessed that I was born without a filter. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never had that problem. But when you talk to women, that when you're mentoring or you're doing one-on-one -on -one conversations, they will share some of these things that have been culturally taught and trained and the expectations set by society or expectations set by their family on them. So I think that understanding those things and then, you know, being considerate on how you relay your message is important. So I like to mentor, educate, but also recognizing and acknowledging my life is not your life. So I have to first listen to you to understand why you've made the decisions you made or the choices you made on certain things that I would have done completely a thousand percent different. You know what I mean? So I think that's how I like to, to contribute is by understanding other women and mentoring them, empowering them. Um, and as many of my friends have said, you know, some of these young ladies too, uh, and no, they're not really young, but they will <laughs> say, <laughs> Anna is a person that doesn't leave the ladder for you. She drags you up with her. All right. And I love to hear that because it makes me feel good because, you know, we do it and again. I, I probably did have some of that cultural uh, influence where, you know, Anna, don't talk about yourself or don't do it. And for a long time, I probably didn't. I'm just glad that I was able to recognize that it was okay as early as I did. Um, so I think that's important too, you know, educating women on, again, your platform, your voice, and when to use it and how to use it without coming off a standoffish or, you know, anything like that it's really empowering for yourself and for the others yeah and you know um as you were talking about that I know that that exists but I don't know those women <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know those women you know the the Latinas that I know yeah they don't fit that description <laughs> we're, the, we're the fiery ones right <laughs> right yeah so that's you know the, I guess that's what I've attracted because I don't know those quiet ones and you and know that's why um... you don't know them because they're quiet <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But the ones I know, they speak up, they have no problem, you know, and just women in general, but I do, you know, I understand because I remember when I lived in Las Vegas, um, at the time I was the vice president of the Pioneers. Um, and someone on my team said, I didn't even know, because I didn't really speak, I didn't share. I didn't talk back then at that time. I didn't really share a lot of stuff. It was more, I was more quiet about it, you know, and thinking like, okay, somebody else, it's for somebody else to speak on it. Then I went to an event and there were different chapters that were winning money, right? They were being, you know, for a project or something, they were getting money and that money would allow them to invest in their, their communities and do right. more good. And I'm like, well, hold, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So from I that point, some of that. 
<laughs> you know, exactly. So from that point on, sister started using her voice, right? I started using my voice more and I started telling people because I did recognize that those days where you just put your head down and, and you know, did your work, people will come and pat you on the back, tap, you know, recognize you. Those days are kind of over. <laughs> right. You know, and the only way that you really are going to get something is if you ask for it. Um, if you take it, you know, you create your own opportunities, but we have to use our voices um, because often you go unrecognized. Right. They don't even know you're there. <laughs> if, or, if you're or not people speaking. Are, or people might be taking note. I always tell you, you're always being watched. You know, so they might mm -hmm. see your, your worth and your potential, but since you don't see it, they kind of wait. They just leave you there. So that's another thing that Maybe you are the greatest and the grandest and somebody has noticed, but you have to put yourself out there and, and be open to them reaching out and saying, hey, Deneen, I want you to come for this. Like you said, you saw it and you're like, I want some of that. Go after it. And it does take some initiative and some drive to do that. Absolutely. So absolutely no you, you're absolutely right about it because sometimes they do recognize but then they're waiting for you to take a step it's kind of like ask you, you know it's it's the uh faith without works is dead right <laughs> you know what i'm saying so you do you don't just pray and then sit there and wait no you have to put in some work <laughs> you know you have to you know make some things happen so yes 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 to all of that so we have talked about, you know, um, women who may not recognize that they have voices, right? They don't recognize the power of their voices. Um, what would you like to tell those who perceive themselves to be voiceless? Start in your circle, but get out of your comfort zone and venture out. So one of the things I tell um, the women that I mentor at whatever age um, You'll discover a lot more if you go to another person in the room that maybe is not as talkative, but you initiate that conversation. Um, and it feels comfortable because you feel like you can relate. Okay, that person's shy. Let me go over there. And you talk to them, start the conversation, and you'll notice that maybe you're asking or you're approaching that person is powerful enough. Your voice is now being heard. Continue that and then challenge yourself each time more and more. Speak to somebody who maybe you would have never approached. Um, don't be uh, discouraged by titles or by social status or anything like that. You know, go and approach someone. Um, I've always, since I'm in sales, my big thing has always been, you're going to get about 10 no's before you get a one yes. But when you get that one yes, your voice would just be magnified. It'll explode. Everybody's going to listen. So just Little by little, if you're not comfortable 100% right now, step out of that comfort zone, whatever it is, whether it's, I'm going to share this post that I might not have, but Anna and Denise told me to, you know, so something <laughs> like that, it could start minor, just keep working towards that, keep encouraging yourself, push yourself, unite yourself and surround yourself with other women that are going to push you. Uh, we all have that one friend that you're like, why am I your friend? Take them with you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> use that. Yes, in this practice, right? Like you yes. said, start small. Start with somebody you're comfortable with and then, you know, step out, you know, go with somebody else who may be sitting next to them. And then, you know, before you know it, you're you're speaking to any and everybody and you're comfortable and it just becomes second nature. So Anna, before we wrap up, what else would you like to share with our listeners? So I would say to all women of color, um, continue to join conversations like this, continue to amplify your voice by talking to others and reaching out to others. Sometimes you will find um, an advocate and the unlikeliest person. So do not prejudge, do not make an assumption um, based on anything but your own um, attempt or conversation with anyone. So I would always say, you know, don't discard anyone or anything until you've tried for yourself. Um, a lot of times um, our second guessing is our worst enemy. So don't even allow that to be your hindrance. And, you know, always pursue, if you know it's right, pursue that, share it, reshare it, amplify that voice and continue to use your platform and build other platforms, not only for yourself, but other women. I love it. I appreciate you, Anna L. Garcia. 
Uh, Simo's national president. Thank you so much for lending your voice, sharing your voice with an intimate conversation with women of color and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Denine. Have a wonderful day. You as well. Bye. Bye.